Back to Access Tech Live. Now, imagine that you could control your lights just by uh, using a ring on your hand, a ring on your finger. That sounds like a really interesting proposition. No fiddly apps, no internet connection required at all. Well, that's exactly what the Lotus Ring is all about, and we heard about it earlier this year at CES, Mark. Yes, we did, and Deval Patel is the founder and CEO of Lotus, whose mission is to build technology that's useful to everyone by optimizing for disability first. And Deval joins us now. And give me a quick background on, of course, what inspired you to create the Lotus Ring. Yeah, absolutely. So the story really starts with me. I was born with twisted knees. And over the years, I've been on and off crutches myself. And one night a few years ago, I got into bed having left the lights on accidentally. But I was too tired to get out of bed, hop onto my crutches, hobble 10 feet, turn off the light, hobble back 10 feet and get back into bed. So I just slept with the lights on the entire night and woke up in the morning not having slept well, thinking if someone like me, I'm an engineer, I used to manage a division at Apple for iPhone watch and AirPods. I've worked at the company that makes the wall switches. I've worked at Lutron. I have 37 patents. You know, if an electrical engineer like me doesn't even have smart home technology in their own home, who does? And that was the genesis. That's how I started digging. How long ago was that? That was, that was some time ago. That was before 2021. I think it was pre-pandemic, but I was also convinced it was the worst idea in the world. So I didn't, A, I didn't do anything about it. And then after I decided to do something about it, I interviewed people for nine months. For the benefit of our audience here, can you explain what Lotus Ring is, what it does, and explain the technology behind it? Because I think that's a really important key to the door here. Yeah, absolutely. So let's let's back up. Why don't we start with kind of the state of the art today, right? So let's say you wanted to actually use Alexa to control your lights. Well, what's the first step? Well, the first step is you need to rewire your wall switches to connect to the internet, to be able to talk to Alexa, right? That's step number one. Then you have to put a smart, and that, by the way, that's everywhere in your home. So wherever you want smart home tech, you have to rewire everywhere. That's step one. Step two, wherever you've rewired your wall switches, now you have to put a smart speaker in every room of the house to control the switches you just rewired. That's step two. And by the way, step one is 11 hours or $2,000 just to rewire your home. Okay. So step one, rewire. Step two, put speakers in every room. Step three, if you somehow got through the first two hurdles, you have to now pair every switch one by one through another app. And if you lose power, by the way, you lose all the pairings, so you have to start from scratch all over again. And this is best case, everything I just described is best case if you own the house. If you're renting an apartment, there's no solution. If you're traveling for work or for pleasure, there's no solution. Like what do you do in a hotel? You can't take your smart home with you. So it affects everyone, but it disproportionately affects people like me. About 27 million people, at least here in the U.S., with limited mobility. We're talking veteran soldiers, older adults, and disabled persons. So to solve that problem, we ended up creating Lotus. So Lotus is a wearable ring that controls objects at home by pointing. But unlike, say, Alexa, there's no apps, no rewiring, and no internet. And I'm happy to talk about how it works. In fact, I have a, a little show and tell here as well. Well, let's get into the show and tell because I think that's the biggest question people are going to have right now. How? <laughs> Absolutely. So step number one, you put on the ring. There's a single button that I'm using on the camera here, single button. And all you do is push the button. I'll explain what it does in a second. So putting on the ring once eliminates the need to have a smart speaker in every room of your home because the ring stays on you and goes with you wherever you go. So that's step one. Step two, for any existing wall switch, and we haven't made any changes, this is a regular wall switch, and by the way, there are other types of wall switches too, I have another prototype here as an example. For any existing wall switch, you can attach the second half, which is a Lotus switch cover, and it attaches on just using magnets. So there's no rewiring, there's two magnets on the back, and it can just go on top of any existing wall switch. Now you can continue using the wall switch manually as well. So you can walk up to it and use it like a regular wall switch, just press on the front surface. But the most important part, step three, all you do is point and click. And using infrared, just like your TV remote, 
eliminates the need for any apps or smartphones or internet. Basically, we let you go from home to smart home in seconds, and you can take any of this with you wherever you go. Now, I'd ask the question, but I think we all know the answer here, which is how does this enhance accessibility and obviously open the door to independence for people with limited mobility? I mean, you're demonstrating it right there, right? So we know the answer to this, but you know, you're not getting up off your couch, you're not getting up out of your bed, you're not doing anything. It really is that quick and simple and easy to install and use, right? Exactly. I couldn't have said it better, right? It's the social model of disability. It's making any environment around you immediately accessible within seconds and in such a way that you can move it with you wherever you go. So you can change any environment anywhere that you are to be accessible such that you're more independent. And even the changing the environment, you don't need somebody else. You can do that yourself too. Okay, let's get a little technical for a second here, if you don't mind, Deval, because, you know, infrared, you know, again, for people listening to this conversation, tuning in today, are probably thinking, hang on a minute, this is a bit old, isn't it? This is old technology here. You've got moving parts in the switch, of course, that go on top of the switch, and then you've got the infrared. But in this case, infrared is, is kind of perfect, isn't it? Because I'm assuming you can have multiple devices in a room, and based on what you're pointing at, you're controlling that device. So you, you should be our spokesperson. You, <laughs> you, you nailed it. So the whole benefit of infrared is on a few factors. One, exactly that you mentioned, you don't need an app to control five things in your home. Because think about it. How do you do that today with Internet of Things? You have to, take, you have to find your phone, unlock your phone, find the app, and then find the specific device that you're trying to control. Usually by that point, it's almost easier for some folks to just get up and kind of move the thing anyway. You know, there's a story, I think, in every household where, you know, you've made your home smart and then your wife or your kids get up and turn the light on faster than you can do it. Right, right, exactly. And so with this, and, and the reason for that is there's no way for your phone to know which light switch you're trying to turn on. Versus with this, it's like a TV remote. Only the thing you're pointing to will turn on and off. So you don't need any smart stuff. You can just point and click to whatever you're trying to control. And so my expertise is actually human interface. That's what I did at Apple. And the reason your TV remotes haven't changed in decades, if you think about it, they haven't changed in decades. And the reason for that is exactly, it's a low physical effort and low cognitive effort, right? It's, it's a small muscle movement and it's very easy to understand. The way we like to describe it is we are using old technologies, established technologies, but in a very, very new way. I mean, trying to miniaturize sort of very, very old school technology is a completely different engineering problem. Uh, and so, yeah, the nice thing about infrared is battery life. Instead of having to charge this every day, like an Apple Watch, or every three days, like an Aura Ring, you only need to charge this once in 90 days, nine zero. And it's the same with the switch cover because it's only taking power for the 50 milliseconds that I push the button. The rest of the time, it's not drawing any power versus with Internet of Things, they have to be connected to the network all the time. So they have to draw power all the time. In fact, that's why they have wires to be able to draw power all the time to be able to be connected all the time. Versus with this, it's no different than your TV remote, right? When was the last time you even remember changing the batteries? I was going to bring that up, actually, because, you know, battery life is amazing. I mean, there's other elements of this, too, which could enable this, you know, obviously for Internet connectivity. But there's nothing stopping you from doing it, right? So you could have the best of both worlds, especially given that there's a physical switch that could connect to the Internet. Or people could use IR blasters, which, you know, allow you to control different things. I guess you could use a lot of that stuff if you wanted to benefit from both worlds. That's, that's really quite amazing, right? No, actually, that's been one of the nicest things. So that tends to be true if the older technology has deprecated. But if you think about it, all TVs, literally every single TV you can buy today, including the smart ones, still have an infrared transmitter and the receiver. Their transmitters in the remote and their receivers in the TV. So it's not gone anywhere. In fact, there, there's a reason it's not gone anywhere. It's because it works. And so that's actually the reason why it's been super easy for us they're very cheap, it's very inexpensive, it's easy to find and easy to integrate. So what's next? Because now we're controlling switches, um, but obviously there are different types of switches. There's fans, there's TVs, there's appliances in our homes. Yeah, so the idea was we wanted to make it not just physically accessible, we wanted to make it economically accessible as well. And so the whole idea was, well, for the same price point that you would either get one ring 
or one smart speaker, what if you could get a whole smart home? And that's the idea, right? Because you get a ring, you can put one switch cover in every room and you're done. Are switch covers and light switches just the beginning here? Yes, absolutely. So first of all, we don't actually, it doesn't actually matter what the switch controls. So lights are a common example. That's why we use it. But it, it doesn't, yeah. So your wall switch could control a fan. So you could control fans. It could control for rental apartments, very common to control an AC because that's switch controlled. So today the things we control are lights, fans, and appliances. And, and in addition to that, we control TVs. Now what's coming up next is things that plug into the wall. And to back up a second, our big focus from the very beginning was only to focus on things that you need to do your daily activities. So what do you, what does everyone do on a daily basis, right? Everyone has to eat, go to the toilet, shower, change your clothes. And to do those four things, you have to get out of bed and move around the house. However you move. Those six things are often called activities of daily living. But the point is to do those six things that everybody's got to do, no matter how much money you have, you need three underlying things. You need a light source, right? In the morning, it's blinds in the evening, it's electric lights, but you need light. Second, you have to open and close doors. And third, whichever space of your home you end up in, you have to usually control something. Oftentimes your environment, like a fan or AC or lights, but also for, you know, like older adults, it might be the TV. So that's our focus. We only want to, you know, instead of random internet of thing objects, we're only focused on the things you have to use every day. And for people with disabilities right now, those 27 million people I talked about, they can end up spending up to an extra three and a half or four hours every single day to do just these basic things. So if people want to find out more, where can they go for more information? So you can go on our website, getlotus.com. That's G-E-T-L-O-T-U-S. Dot com. Get lotus.com like the flower. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I cannot wait to have you back on. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure being here. The Lotus Ring is available in a kit of one ring and three switch covers for $349 US dollars. And you can visit, as he said, get lotus.com right now if you're interested. Coming up here on Access Tech Live, are our devices getting too far out of reach? What do we think? More importantly, what do you think? We'll get to your answers after a quick break here on Access Tech Live. There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back.